Hey guys, it's Christina here. I hope you're having the most amazing day ever. Today is sardine fast day. So if you are new and you're following along or you haven't been following along with what's going on, let me just move out of the sun. Um, I am challenging my metabolic system with a whole bunch of different types of eating fast uh, in order to help me knock down the insulin levels and to be able to get into ketosis and move to that next phase that I want to move to with my own health journey and that is to lose more weight, gain more energy, do all of the good stuff. So today it's a 24 hour sardine fast. Now I have done a 24 hour sardine fast before and it showed really good results. Uh, so I'm expecting nothing but good results today. We will see how we go. And I'm tracking all of the results that I'm getting in a little grid to work out which of these eating fasts actually provide me with good results. And then we're gonna test out the ones that do the best with different timing of using them. So alternate day fasting, 48 hour fasting, 72 hour fasting, and actually see um, how that goes. So. Here we go. First can of sardines is what the sardine fast starts with. So hit the timer folks, cause now it's time to start. Okay, I'm starting my first uh, one with the Brunswick wild sardines in spring water. So one of the things that I do wanna share is that for those that are doing this with me, so I have a group of around 25 participants who are also doing this challenge with me to get the results with hyperinsulinemia and uh, move their weight loss along and do all of the good things that we wanna do. Now, one of the things that I say to them when it comes to the sardine fast is, treat it like a game, make it an experiment and get as many different sardine brands and, uh, varieties as you can. So the other thing I say don't get is like the tomato ones because they do have quite a few carbs in them and we don't want that. So, but you can go with things like the lemon flavored ones or the chili ones uh, and give those a bit of a try. Because most people have an aversion to sardines, even without ever having tried them, it's just the name sardines. I think like people have this grossness about without even having tried them. Um, and so, what I am saying to the participants is go to the IGA, the local supermarkets, the big supermarkets, get as many different ones as you can. Now, for me personally, I'm going to do it in spring water because I'm carnivore and I don't want the oils. For other people, they're happy to use the oils. I still am not super happy with the oils simply because like even olive oil, like when they do the canning process, they put the fish in there and then they heat it up so that olive oil is getting rancid in there because it's been heat treated um, so I'm not a super big fan of that but if that's what you need to do and it gets you the results do that do do that um, but other than that go and get as many different varieties as you possibly can and try them out because I promise you they actually all do taste different uh, some will taste really similar some will taste the same but some will actually have a really distinctly different flavor and so you might actually find within that experiment when you're playing with different ones you might actually find one that you really actually like and are happy to eat on a more consistent basis so if you're following along at home get as many different varieties and cans and and so on as you possibly can all right, here we go. Mmm, sardines. Okay, so there's my little sardines. What I'm gonna do is add some apple cider vinegar to this lot. And this is just a bottle of salt and herbs that I have there. Uh, so I'm gonna add some salt and vin vinegar to it. Uh, and that will be my breakfast. Now, I did previously just pour that off. I'm not doing that anymore. I'm just drinking it uh, because it's good for me. I could give it to my dogs if I want to, but I'm going to do it. Let's just go the whole hog and do it. Check out my breakfast location, by the way, as well. There's my son over there walking the dog. This is my breakfast location. Actually, I got the vinegar really right there. That's pretty good. 
Um, I'm having my sardines. Um, the cat is trying to fight with me to eat my sardines. Um, so, he's, <laughs> no! <laughs> she really wants to eat them. <laughs> oh, and they're mine, so. I might have to give her some. So, good morning, folks. It is day two. Well, the day after the sardine fast. Um, so we've done a 24 hour sardine fast. My blood glucose this morning was back to its normal normal thing. But last night it got to 4.4 and ketones were 1.6. So that's kind of like the highest I've ever actually been so far in this journey when it comes to ketones. So um, sardines definitely work for my body. <laughs> so now it's about finding ways that actually help them taste really good for me. I think actually yesterday wasn't too bad. Um, I think I'm just kind of getting used to them and also finding a brand that I actually like um, is probably beneficial as well so I really like the Brunswick brand um, other people like other brands but that's the key of actually exploring and playing and treating it like an experiment and actually starting to test out different things so that you can find what do I actually like uh, anyway so ketones went really well so I got down to my GKI score was like 2.75 last night when I went to bed which is fabulous so overnight I did some autophagy this morning it came back up which essentially just means that my liver released glycogen as I slept um, and that's you know as the sardines start to wear off the ketones start to drop and the insulin comes back up and so like I, I've mentioned before it's kind of like a rusty tap and the more you use it the more it gets used the better it actually works and turns and so on so that's what i'm doing with these fasts is actually testing out which things actually help that tap turn and which things are going to get it mobilizing and moving so that i can do that more frequently and help to get that insulin off and get those ketones up and get into fat burning mode and here's the thing this morning when i weighed i was down 1.3 kilos so that's nearly three pounds um, so for the for US folks that was nearly three pounds so clearly my body really enjoys sardines and it's really good for it in that perspective of actually getting into ketosis uh, my taste buds don't love it as much uh, so it's about a balancing act there um, but my goal is that at the end of this 90-day challenge what or quest uh, at the end of this 90-day quest what I will most likely try and do is three days a week doing one of these things that's actually going to be beneficial for getting me in ketosis. Now it might be three days consecutively or it might be alternate days. Um, that's the next part of the challenge. Uh, after testing out broth, um, that will be the next part of the challenge is to work out which one of these works best, but also which one's going to fit into my lifestyle better um, and mentally and all of that type of stuff. So sardine fast did well, really pleased with the results. I was hoping that they were the ketones would stay longer. My ketones are 0.3 this morning. Um, not not terrible, but not as great as 1.6. <laughs> um, so we'll see how we go over the next the next week, and then I'll be doing the broth fast. So the broth fast will be another 24 hour fast, and then we start into different types of lengthings of these types of fasts. So. There we go. There's my results. I hope you have an amazing day. And if you try the sardine fast, let me know. I look forward to hearing how you go. Bye for now. So one question that I get asked all the time is a, why do the sardine fast? And the other is how many did you eat? So yesterday I had about six cans of sardines. That's generally what I will eat. Um, the key is not to limit yourself. It's just to have as many as you actually want. Um, so if you're hungry, eat them. If you're not hungry, don't eat them but the sardine time the fasting time doesn't start until you have that first can now the reason for doing it is that or well, the reason that it works is that sardines have some median chain and small chain fatty acids in them or triglycerides and they don't have to go through the normal pathway when it comes to digestion of fats so normal saturated fats need to go through the the um, lymphatic system and they need to you know we need to have bile released and we need to then transport them into the lymphatic system and then they get moved around the body 
when it comes to the um, small chain, medium chain fatty acids, they're actually just moved straight to the liver through the portal, the liver portal, and then that feeds the mitochondria. And the mitochondria turns those small chain, medium chain fatty acids into ketones. And those ketones lift up and then they um, allow the insulin to turn off. And that then allows your body to start using fat as a fuel source. Um, which for many of us who've been left with some insulin resistance or hyperinsulinemia, that's a real challenge for us. Like we might lose weight really easily in the first part of our journey, but then we get to a point where it's just not working because we don't have a primary fuel source. So we're not tapping into ketones. Ketones are not rising like they would do in a normal health and healthy metabolic system. They're not rising because that insulin is too high and we're not eating carbs so there's no carbohydrates that are coming in so our body is making carbohydrates or making glucose and the way that it does that is through protein and that process is very taxing on the body like you use actual energy in the process of making that energy and so it leaves you feeling tired exhausted it is a catabolic state which is an actual breaking down state uh, and it's the place where i find that most people will actually start to give up on a diet because they are trying to work it harder so they're reducing their calories reducing their food intake even more um, and they're just not getting the results because and they're feeling exhausted and tired and eventually the messages and the signals to your brain is to stop. The messages that you get like are these overwhelming carb cravings because there's no primary fuel source that's coming into your body. And so that for me is why, why I'm doing it. Now, why wouldn't I just leave it? Why wouldn't I just go, well, my body's only using carbs, so let's just eat carbs. Well, for two reasons. One, that doesn't actually solve the problem that I've had with diabetes. It doesn't solve that problem. It just feeds it and make it, makes it worse. And the other is that there is just as much issue with high blood insulin as there is with high blood glucose. So they just attack different organs. So high insulin is going to attack your uh, single organs, like your liver and your heart and, and your brain and so on. Whereas high blood glucose attacks your double organs, like your eyes and your kidneys and so on, your extremities, your feet, etc. cetera. Um, so both are not good. Both are not good. And so it's not about, oh, well, I'll just eat carbohydrates so I've got energy. It's actually about, we know we need to resolve why you are not getting into ketosis, why that's not actually happening. And we need to help your body do that. And, you know, well, I've trained my body in many ways by eating, you know, high carbohydrate diets and all sorts of different things throughout my life. I'm not necessarily consciously, but, you know, that's what I was fed as a kid and then that's what I grew up with and then of course we're attracted to it for all sorts of different reasons um, and now when it comes to doing some of these sort of challenges or fasts um, it's just about reversing some of that some of what was turned on in those processes that I've had in the, the previous experiences in my life and now starting to turn them off um, and that's the reason, like once we get to the point where we've become metabolically flexible again, then we can, you know, perceivably think about adding in a little bit of carbohydrates here and there if we want to. Now, um, I'm still waiting to see what that's going to be like in the sense of I do have maybe a theory that those of us who are carb addicts are actually carb addicts because of insulin resistance. And I wonder then if... Um, if when we resolve insulin resistance, if we actually are able to have more moderation with carbs and have more of a, a better, healthier relationship with those, those food groups. Um, but I'm not holding out hope. <laughs> We will see, we will see. And if you've been in my space for, for long enough, I don't know that I am 100% carnivore is the only way. Um, I think that certainly um, hyper carnivore is plus, you know, tweaking that depending on the actual body of the individual. So for example, you know, if you've got epilepsy or if you've got, um, you know, ADHD or any of the alphabet sort of spectrum disorders then you probably need to be at least keto in some way shape or form so whether that's keto or um, keto i still think a high protein high meat diet is actually you know at least 70 percent of that should be where we're getting the bulk of our calories from is from animal products um, but i don't know that everybody has to be strict carnivore or um, lion's diet, for example, in order to be healthy and well. I think that that might be the optimal space. Like if you are trying to be elite, 
then um, you know elite high performance machine then probably yes um, but for the general population who are just you know that the don't need that peak performance state probably can enjoy things like cheese and some berries and a few bits and pieces here and there without there being too much of a drama and too much of a problem um, but I don't think like eating eating those high fructose and high high glucose foods all year round is actually beneficial for us in the long term anyway that's just my thought process i look forward to chatting to you again and remember like and subscribe if you um, actually want me to talk about anything in particular please leave a comment below i would love to add it to my list of videos to create for you uh, and otherwise bye for now see you later talk to you soon